is that coming in here? Who's that peeping in the wind now? <clears throat> so, I had to talk with my son tonight because I guess he overheard the conversation from earlier. <clears throat> and the conversation went like this. Said, uh, someone said that, that I treat my oldest son worse than I treat my younger son. Family member. Well, my son heard that, and he said, Daddy, you don't treat me any different from Jeremiah. You treat us the same. But there are some people that do treat us differently. Now, this is coming from my son. That lets you know that kids pay attention, and they hear things. Now, I ain't even going to trip on him for eavesdropping or whatever it was he's doing. Maybe it was meant for him to hear it. But he did tell me some key people that treats him differently from his brother and that he doesn't like it. And I'm like, you know, I understand that, you know. And I'm, I'm careful to make sure that I'm not treating my kids any differently from one another. They get the same love, they get the same respect and honor, you know, and same discipline. When, when one mess up, you know, he get in trouble. When the other one mess up, he get in trouble. But you don't always have to put your hands on your kids. You don't always have to yell at them. There's different forms of dis discipline. Sometimes you can just be quiet and the kid look at you and be like, oh, okay, I guess it's time to be quiet. <laughs> or it could be, you know, uh, push-ups, sit-ups, crunches, workouts, run a mile, you know, whatever. But whatever it is, it needs to start at home first. It's got to start at home. Discipline needs to start at home first. And like I said, it's not always putting your hands on your kids. It's not always putting a belt today, but, you know, it says spare the rod, spoil the child. Some people got the rod mixed with, you know, physical harm and uh, mental abuse. And that ain't cool. That ain't cool at all. The rod is sparing the word, sparing correction. Uh, uh, not sparing. Uh, the rod is not giving correction. You have to literally give correction, which is a form of discipline. But you have to show them. At the same time while telling them, you have to show them correction. Don't tell them not to do something that you ain't doing. Because what they see you do, they will do. What they hear you say, they will say. Kids will soak everything up and it will come out in the worst way possible if you're doing them wrong or if it's post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Kids go through that too. It's something that happens to you uh, that's significant to how you grew up or what you grew up seeing, what you grew up hearing. It's something very significant to that. And if you don't change that behavior, if you don't change that outcome, if you don't change that generational curse, your kids are falling in the same category. That's why a lot of this stuff goes on in the schools. A lot of this stuff goes on uh, in the outside world. As I talk about a lot, the world is hurting, y'all. The world is hurting. Y'all see, it's kids killing kids every day. Every day. And it's because they're dealing with something at home that they can't really talk to somebody about. Because maybe mama is, is working too much, or daddy working too much, or daddy ain't there, or mama ain't there. But just, you know, being treated unfairly. You gotta, you gotta talk to your kids. And you gotta find out what they know, what they hear, and what they may be going through. But you gotta have a relationship with your children, first of all in order for that to happen. If you don't have a relationship, they're not gonna talk to you. They're not gonna tell you everything. They're probably gonna be very disrespectful to you. They're probably gonna look like a rebellious child to you because something is lacking. Something is missing that they can't talk to you about because they're not comfortable talking with you because they feel they have no relationship with you. Don't get mad at them. 
Don't even get upset with them. Take what they saying and look yourself in the mirror and say, why is my child feeling this way? Or why is um, my child saying this? It's, it's some real stuff that goes on. You know, one, two people joining, some people leave out, come back in, nobody comments. Hey, that's cool. That's cool. Because somebody going to get this message. Somebody going to receive it. Somebody going to reach out. Or somebody going to say, you know what? That brother's right. Because it goes on in probably every home. It don't matter your race, your color, ethnicity, background. It don't matter. Because we all bleed the same blood. But what are you gonna do to change it? What's up, Larry? What are you gonna do? Can you talk to your kids? Do you have a personal relationship with your kids where you can ask them a question and they will answer you honestly? Or can they come to you and talk to you about what they're going through? Can they do that? If you don't have that relationship with your child, you better reevaluate some things quick and fast before they get too old, too old, too grown, and, or before it's too late. There's no time like the present. Even if your kids is grown, call them up and ask them. Just call them. Ask them that question. Have I done right by you? Did, did I do everything that I can to help you in life? Did I steer you in the right direction? Have I wronged you? Ask those questions. Those questions are what needs to be asked. Ask these kids that. And just maybe, maybe, that can change the world. That can change their mindset of whatever they're going through. Seek out counsel, personal counseling, self-evaluation, you know, counsel for yourself, counsel for your family, family counseling. Even friend counsel, you know, when you're having conversations with your friends and y'all just sitting around playing dominoes or whatever, ask questions. Counsel. Some people may not want to come out and talk about this. It's, it's, it's very touchy-feely. So don't get upset, but try to understand where they're coming from because something. If they talk to you, then they're like, okay, we can chop it up about this. If they don't, then they really just don't trust you or they're really not comfortable telling their business to you. But they'll tell somebody else that they got to pay. Message. What's up, Sandra? I'm just saying, talk to your kids. Uh, Sandra, you just jumped in. I'm just let you know what you've been talking about. Relationship with your children and, and uh, you know, your children come in and talking to you about whatever they're going through, can they come and talk to you about what it is that they may be dealing with? You know, is somebody treating them bad? Or are you treating them bad? You know, this is the relationship we gotta have with our kids, especially right now in this day and age. Cause we don't want no more repeated cycles. People's kids coming up missing, or people's kids going to school, getting bullied, or shot, whatever it is, beat up, molested, raped, all of the above. Y'all know all of that stuff is really going on. But somebody got to talk about it. We need to have a relationship with these kids. Literally. We need to have a relationship with them. Men, start going into the schools and fellowshipping with these kids. Talking with them. Uh, finding out what's going on. Fathers, step up to the plate. Get out there. Get active. Get involved in your kid's life. Get a relationship with them. Mothers have been doing it for years, for years. And in some aspects, they lack. Some of them, they do lack. And that ain't no shot at them. That's just saying, you know, a woman can't do everything. It's like a man can't do everything. You're supposed to do things together. But somebody got to say it. Somebody got to tell them. So I guess that's me. <laughs> Uh, but it's just it's something that has to be done something must be done 
I'm not gonna shoot this video to um, to post to my Facebook page. I'm gonna shoot it to my YouTube page. From here on out, everything that I do on live, I'm just gonna shoot it straight to my YouTube page. And that's how I'm gonna gain my followers. You know, and those that don't follow me, that don't support me, deletion time. I don't care if you is family. I don't care if you is a friend. If you really a friend and you really family like that, then go ahead and go to my YouTube page and hit that like and subscribe and share button and share my content. But if you ain't, hey, I still love you too. But you you won't be on this ride. You won't be on this roller coaster. I still love you the same. I ain't sh no shot at you at all. I'ma still love you, friend, family, enemy, it don't matter. But if you ain't following me and you don't hit that button, bye-bye. I don't need people on my platform that's going to just be sitting around and won't subscribe to my channel when I ain't even asking you for finances. I'm asking you to click a daggum button. And you can't even do that. I don't need them followers. So I'm going to be deleting a lot of folk tonight. Be deleting a lot of them. Ain't gonna miss you. Maybe you'll come back later on and you'll follow me then. Maybe. Maybe not. At the end of the day, it ain't gonna make or break me. I love you. Blessings to y'all. Knowledge.